Well, hello. Do you know anyone who's codependent? Do you know anyone who's narcissistic? Are you either of these things? Because the codependent and the narcissist are people who find each other and sort of are perfectly matched the way that every cracked pot when it comes to love will find the cracked lid that fits perfectly. My name is Terry Cole. I am a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, and the founder of the Real Love Revolution. So welcome to this week's video where I'm gonna be talking about the perfectly orchestrated dance between the narcissist and the codependent. Shall we do that? Because so many of you, um, I did the video, um, are, you, um, are you dating a narcissist? And it was just so many people were asking questions and <clears throat> sharing it all over social media. So it made me know that many of you are suffering by being in a relationship with a narcissist because I doubt most of those people who were sharing that we're narcissists because they don't even think that they are, right? So I feel like it's probably the codependents who are like, oh my God, there's a solution, thank you. So I wanted to get more specific as many, many of you actually wrote in and said, I wanna understand what are my codependent behaviors, what are their, to their narcissistic behaviors. So we're gonna talk about the dance a little bit, but I think that I should just establish the codependent behaviors. Let's just, you it for you, I'm just gonna list 10 things that if this is happening, or if this is you in a relationship, then you're a codependent. <laughs> so it's not, listen, it's not terrible, but this is just what it is. Number one, are you feeling responsible for solving other people's problems? You know what this is, I don't need to massively go into it, right? You feel overly responsible for other people. Um, number two, feeling used and unappreciated for all that you do, right? You feel, even though you, you happily do it, Quotes, you feel used and unappreciated. Number three, um, offering advice to others whether they ask for it or not. You feel responsible for solving their problems but also giving them advice even though they haven't asked for it. Number four, expecting others to do what you say. Like being pissed if you've given advice to someone even if they didn't ask you for it, you're mad that they don't do it. Um, taking everything personally taking everything personal, like it's all happening to you. Did you ever see uh, that movie with Barbara Streisand and Robert Redford? If you're really young, you probably haven't. It's called The Way We Were. It's awesome. And at one point, and she's a political activist and he's just beautiful. And at one point he says, wow, it's not all happening personally to you, like in the world, like everything is happening in the world. And this is exactly what a codependent feels like. It is all happening personally. Um, feeling like a victim right? Feeling like you are being victimized, um, trying to please others so that they will love you. So being very involved and interested in uh, pleasing others, um, fearing rejection and fearing that you, f having a fear that you are actually unlovable. So it's almost like you have to be of use to someone and be doing all of this over functioning work in order to be loved that you don't feel inherently lovable. Um, Number nine is using manipulation to basically shame, guilt, or control other people's behaviors, right? To get your way to, um, you want to force compliance with other people. You want them to do, right? And listen, again, this is unconscious. I'm not saying you have some masterminded plan to do that, but this is how it basically comes out so everyone else's behavior becomes a to you is like a reflection of you so you want to feel in control of what people are doing so you know any means necessary you'll get all Malcolm X as to how you need to get people to do what you want them to do um, and the last thing is basically making up excuses for others bad behavior lying to yourself because being codependent you don't deal directly with your own feelings. So you've developed these sort of really um, involved techniques to lie to yourself. You, you feel responsible for other people's behaviors, so you'll rationalize and blame others for their, your loved one's poor behavior. Does that make sense? It's like, well, if, if she didn't have that stupid friend who drank so much, then your daughter wouldn't be drinking too much rather than putting it on the daughter 
right? Again, it's trying to seek, it's trying to maintain control. So those are 10 ideas that you get of how you basically behave if you're a codependent in relationships. And now let's list 10 things that a narcissist will do in relationships. And then we'll talk about the dance because really it's, it's one that you just don't want to be a part of and if you're watching this and it has resonated with you then you probably are a part of a relationship of codependency and narcissistic behaviors and I want to be clear when I'm talking about you know I'm a licensed psychotherapist so you know there's there's different ways that we look at narcissism where it's like people can have narcissistic behavior or tendencies without having a narcissistic personality disorder so a narcissistic personality disorder, the likelihood of that person changing is way less small because it's, it's hardwired in a different way. People who are, have narcissistic tendencies or who are bad listeners or who are selfish, if through, through proper dialogue, through honest truth-telling dialogue, those things can change. So I'm hoping that if you're in a relationship with someone who displays narcissistic behaviors and tendencies, that perhaps you can learn something in this video where you can behave differently, stop your 50% of the dance, and maybe your partner has the capacity to be less self-absorbed, right? So anyway, let's talk about 10 points of a narcissist in relationships, and then we will go into basically the dance of what people are actually doing. What does it look like when you're in this relationship with a narcissist if you're a codependent or vice versa? And again, I'd have to say, I doubt if you're really a narcissist that you're watching this. So, or you are and you're thinking other people in your life are narcissistic. So one thing that the narcissist does is uses manipulation because they're, they see people, other people as an extension of themselves. So making decisions for others that suits the narcissist's need. So not wanting a grown child to move away because that's not what they want, even if it's in the best interest of the grown child. That's what a narcissist will do. Um, it, it's like using people you love, children, lovers, friends, for these really like to meet unreasonable self-serving needs. That is what a narcissist does. Narcissists also have a lot of negative emotions, right? They enjoy sort of spreading around and like stirring the pot of negative emotions to gain intention, to feel powerful, and to actually keep the codependent insecure and off balance. Um, I mean, this is an obvious one, a grandiose personality, right? Thinking of, your, of yourself as a hero, um, you're a princess, um, you're, a, you're a king, you're a prince, you're a super one-of-a-kind special person. Now listen, I like to say, you know, we're all living our one-of-a-kind unique lives, and that's true. But the flavor of when a narcissist does it is not like that. It's like them being so super special, really believing that others cannot live or survive without his or her magnificence in their life. Like that is a grandiose personality. Um, someone who feels entitled. Narcissists often expect preferential treatment from others and it could be anybody right they expect others to cater often like instantly to what it is that they want without really feeling compelled to be considerate in return in their mindset honestly the world actually does revolve around them uh, another trait of a narcissist in a relationship is someone who's a charmer they can be very charismatic and persuasive so you know, we're, they're, I understand the appeal, the allure. So if they're interested in you, for their own gratification, of course, they make you feel super special, super wanted, right? But once they lose interest, you most likely, they've gotten whatever it is that they want out of you, which is so sad to say, but it's actually true. They may drop you without a second's notice in a really very insensitive way to just dump you. They could be very engaging and super social as long as you're fulfilling what their desire is and giving them all of your attention then they're going to be fine all right other traits of a narcissist in a relationship are boundary violations so they just have no ability they don't care that want and disregard they don't care for your other people's thoughts feelings possessions physical space they don't care 
it's really, they overstep and they'll, they'll use things without consideration, not ask, borrow money, not return it, borrow items, not return it, borrow clothing, not give it back, break promises, which is another boundary violation, um, not fulfill their obligations. So they'll say they're going to do something repeatedly and not do it. And they show like little remorse. They don't, they don't, they don't care. And they'll also find a way to blame you or the other person, whoever they're doing it to, for their lack of respect for them. Uh, the next thing in a relationship is they, they project this uh, like a fake image. It's like a faux self. They like to do things to impress other people. It's all about what it looks like. Super, it's all about optics with the narcissist. What does it look like? Uh, they have like a trophy complex, they call it, right? They, they, wanna, they want you to... Um, appreciate them and and you know look at them physically they, they want to be, their sexual prowess their socially they it, it can go anywhere it can it can come out in religion they'll be like the best catholic you've ever seen or the most devout jew you've ever known this can also it's all about status being the best at something being elevated in some way um really into getting trophies merit badges um again it's it's all about how things look so that they're putting out there like that they're worthy of everyone's admiration that that's what it is for them um other traits is that their conversation interrupters while people well you know some people just have bad communication skills that's one thing but people um the narcissist interrupts quickly and switches the focus back to themselves shows little genuine interest in you which is really painful if you're in that relationship. That is super painful. Um, also, narcissists are rule breakers. They're really proud to be rule breakers. They, they get off on violating rules and social norms, cutting in line, um, chronic under tipping. Wow, which super pisses me off because my mother used to be a waitress for many years. So I'm always checking that we are not stiffing the waitress because that is uncool. Um, stealing office supplies, which sounds weird, but just breaking multiple appointments and expecting not to be charged or not to um, have whatever that is applied to them, breaking traffic rules, those types of things. Um, let's see. And the last one is like a, a, a really bad listener, like a conversation hog, you know? That's it, you know, the narcissist loves to, they love to talk about themselves and tell, they'll like um, tell stories and, you know, in, engage, and they actually can be, be really engaging. You know, this is part of the, pro the problem. But if you're trying to have a two-way conversation, there's no chance to do that with a real narcissist. You'll, you'll struggle to try to, like, shut them up so you can even say something, and they don't let you. They're not making any room for that to happen. So now you have sort of the 10, and don't worry, this will all be in your, I have a little, like, a downloaded sheet for you so that you can see a quick view, we'll call it, right? A quick um, cheat sheet of the 10 um, traits of a narcissist in a relationship, 10 traits of a codependent in a relationship. And then let's just talk about the actual interaction in between. So so why is it this, this perfect set of um, circumstances? And now, if you think about it, you know why, right? It, it's, of course, it's inherently dysfunctional. We get it. But it's a dance as I like to talk about with relationships all relationships are a dance for sure and that original phrase and my my mindset about it came from Dr. Harriet Lerner who's one of my favorite PhDs out there she's written a million things so you should look her stuff up um, she's written the dance of anger the dance of deception the dance of intimacy these are amazing books like she's really one of my heroes um, because she's so brilliant so I just say that because I just want to pay homage to her. She's so smart and so just has impacted my practice and my life so much because she has an interesting way of putting things. Anyway, so the dance, I've been using this dance metaphor for many, many years in my practice and with people because it's so easy to understand that I do this and you do that. That is what a relationship is. When you look at why do codependents and um, narcissists fit so like a hand in glove as I said before the cracked pot finds the perfectly cracked lid to fit on it perfectly so 
a codependent is an overgiver, feels overly responsible for other people and their happiness. A narcissist wants you to overgive to them, wants you to be responsible for their happiness. It's like it couldn't be more, you know, more um, perfectly aligned, which is why I find so many women who come into my practice are in relationships with narcissists and why that the video on narcissism, which we'll put in the um, in the notes as well, is so has been so popular. Or am I da- are you dating a narcissist? I think was the name of it that I put out like a couple of weeks ago, because people are in pain over this experience. So as a codependent, giving, sacrificing and being consumed by the needs and desires of others, really, you, you don't, this is what you do. This is very, very natural for you to do. So being drawn to a narcissist, right, who are selfish, self centered, controlling, you don't see how harmful that is to you. But that is exactly what it is. You find themselves, you find yourself basically in this relationship. And you're attracted to this countermatch basically of the qualities that you have. So you are passive, submissive, and you basically are acquiescing, like giving up to the other person is the leader. And a narcissist is a leader. They're charismatic. They're someone who, um, they're charming. They're, there's a boldness to them that is really sexy, right? And they have this domineering personality. And the codependent, although they're trying to control things under the surface, but outwardly, they're being led by the narcissist, right? So why there's so much sizzle initially, right? It's enthralling because it's it's so um, it, it's so easy, it's so natural. When people say like I knew, you know, it's so natural, right? So you're you're basically transforming. It transforms though the dance gets transformed into drama, conflict, feelings of neglect, and for the uh, codependent, feeling of being super trapped in the situation, right? But you're spellbound. You're both like mesmerized by what you're doing because you're playing out these unresolved issues from your childhood and you can't seem to leave. And you don't want to leave even though you want the pain to stop, right? It's sort of like the the flawless unfolding of this situation because you're doing your natural role. But if you want it to change, if you're in a relationship and you want it to change, you can't do your natural role, which codependents would typically give themselves much, uh, give much more of themselves to their partner than the narcissist is gonna give back to them, right? So you remain very generous, but you become bitter, right? You're sort of stuck in this you, you can't stay, you don't want to stay because you're unhappy, but you can't leave because you don't understand. You're never going to get your need, needs met. You, you keep hoping it's going to happen, but it isn't going to because you're not changing the dance. There's no reason for the narcissist to fulfill the codependent's needs. They don't have to because nobody's making them doing it. So with a codependent, there's a confusion of like sacrificing of yourself and caretaking. You're confusing that as loyalty and love. And so there's a part of you that's very proud of your like dedication to this person that you love or anyone that you love, but you end up feeling so underappreciated. Codependents yearn to be loved so much, but because of the choice of your, I mean, I guess we'd call him a dance partner right now or her a dance partner, you just find that your dreams will just not come true of how you wanted it to be. Just unfulfilled dreams. And it's like a bitter pill to continue swallowing. So you're stuck in this pattern of overgiving and sacrificing without ever really having the possibility of getting your needs met. So you pretend to enjoy the dance and maybe you enjoy aspects of it, but the truth is you're not changing. And I really feel like, you know, with the narcissist, they think that the codependent is perfect for them because they, it makes them, the codependent lets them lead, which makes them feel powerful, competent, and appreciated, right? They feel most comfortable dancing with someone who is going to let them lead and say how great they are, right? So how do we change this? There's the only way to change is that you have to heal the wounds of your childhood. It's not about fixing your partner. It's about 
figuring out why do your is your low your self esteem so low if you're the codependent that you don't think that you can do better than this that you're so afraid of conflict that you won't confront this person in a healthy way and that goes all the way back to asking yourself questions about the home you grew up in and really dealing with you probably know listen you guys if you're looking at narcissism and codependency on YouTube then you're interested in becoming evolved and I want to help you become evolved so let's do it you have to go back to what are the original injuries in your life so this video is not about that this video is about you understanding and identifying a if you're with a narcissist if you are a narcissist B if you're with a codependent if you are a codependent so those will be the two checklists that you'll be able to look at and then understanding the dance so if you can see yourself in this dance are you doing either one of these things because once you can figure this out you will be able to move into this process of stopping being so codependent I've already done a video about that we will put a list we'll put that here too so that you have it I hope that this was helpful I hope that if you like this you'll share it with anyone all over social media share it with people who you think it will help you don't have to even say it directly to them like you don't want to be offensive like hey I think you're a narcissist but share it because you guys the more mentally healthy we are the more we are all rocking this real love revolution because what is getting healthy that is actual self-love right you must love yourself to care about your mental health but I love you and I care about your mental health so let's do this so please share it please subscribe to my YouTube channel I hope that you guys have an amazing week diving deep and as always take care of you